Well, hello. Wow, that kind of, this is a very spinny chair. And the sun keeps going behind clouds, which irritates me right now. Anywho, I have some exciting news. I was asked to be part of a curated show. Wait, where did the sun go? It was way brighter in here. I think I have to adjust, Ooh, I have to adjust the brightness now. That's maybe, that's a little better. I'm not sure. Let's go with that. Watch, the sun will come back and I'll be really bright, really bright. Maybe it would make me sound brighter. Not, probably not. So I got asked to be part of this curated show and I'm going to be working on a bunch of mixed media collage pieces for it and I have plenty of time to do it because it's not until April. And so I'm gonna start off by working on a 24 by 30 inch canvas with a 1.5 inch profile. And um, I've got a bunch of collage papers that I want to use up on this, some vintage papers that I, you know, been holding on to for a while, as well as putting in some architecture. Some of the benefits, well, one in particular, one of the benefits of living with a photographer is you have access to photos. In fact, you can even tell them, listen, I want a really good photo of this bridge. And poof, you get a photo like this. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the other benefit is that they give you permission to manipulate the photo and make it into your very own collage paper. Like this. This is actually very close to where I live. So there's a little bit of my own geography that's going to be part of this mixed media collage painting, as well as some newspaper headlines that I have cut out and carefully placed into a little sandwich bag. So let's get started with this. I'm gonna lay out all of the papers the way that I want them onto this canvas, and uh, then I'm gonna glue them down and we're gonna go from there. This chair is way too much fun. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I've laid out all of my collage papers on top of the canvas and organizing them in such a way that I will like them to be on there. So the next step is basically, I'm gonna take a photo with my phone of how I want this so that when I take all the papers off, I have a reference so I can put them back on the way that I want them to be. And then, putting on the matte medium like I usually do with any of my collages and using a catalyst wedge to get out all of the bubbles because that's important to get all the bubbles out of course and having them arranged exactly the way that I want them to be and I've got some really cool stuff in this collage I was really happy with how everything kind of came together on this so once again, I want to have some texture and when I put texture on using a stencil, I mix my, in this case, it's Liquitex light modeling paste. I mix it with gesso because it makes it way easier to spread kind of like frosting on a cake and then kind of blending some of the edges of the paper so you don't see all of those edges. Now. I'm using acrylic paint here and I'm using transparent colors because I don't want to cover up all of the um, neat stuff that I use and let me tell you about the underestimated tool called the sea sponge. I love sea sponges. I use them a lot in my paintings because they give this kind of grungy textured look that I really enjoy. I find it to be extremely pleasing to the eye for me because you don't get really sharp lines. You get kind of these fuzzy lines and you can go back, make colors darker and do whatever you want. You can layer colors on top of each other. So I highly recommend experimenting with the humble sea sponge. I find it to be a wonderful tool to use at any time. Um, except when you're oil painting, it doesn't really work with oil painting. You kind of have to use brushes for that. So the next thing to talk about would be gelatos. Now gelatos are like this kind of waxy crayon thing that's sort of like lipstick. 
and you can layer them and you can do all kinds of stuff with them and it's really cool you can blend them with your finger they are water soluble so you do have to cover them with a matte medium if you are going to use any other medium over them because otherwise they'll smudge trust me i found out the hard way <laughs> so cover them with a matte medium if you're going to use gelatos so now the acrylic portion of this painting is just about completed and I think it's looking pretty good and it's just about ready to have some oil paint put on, of course, after the acrylic dries. Alright, so one of the reasons why I do an acrylic underpainting is basically so I can get a lot of those grunge textures on, I can do mixed media collage and everything, and then I can follow it up by using oil paint to glaze and to add further refinement, soften the painting, and add depth and dimension. Um, oil paint is very rich and it does create a painting that doesn't look quite as flat as an acrylic painting, which is why I use oil paint. And as long as you use the oil paint on top of acrylic paint and not the other way around, you're good to go. You don't want to do it the other way around. Your painting will crack. It's not good. Don't do that. Okay, so the painting is finished, and I want to know what you think of this painting. What do you think of the mixed media collage? What would you like to see next? Any ideas? Love to hear them, put them in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I love you guys. I will see you next time. Bye. So I'm going to be starting off today with a 24 by 30. Did the sun just go behind a cloud? I think it did. Right with me over there. Well, I can't speak. We'll go from there. <laughs> where, where, where else would you put little words cut out of a newspaper? Sandwich bag, it's the way to go.